Thanks, Steve. It's becoming kind of a, a tradition here to award the, uh, the Dynamic Impact in the Arts Award, uh, also known as the Bob Silman Award. Um, uh, and you could write a book about the winner of this year's Dynamic Impact in the Arts winner. And as many contributions to the cultural richness of Western Massachusetts and across the country. If all he had done was work as program director for a fledgling area radio station some two decades ago and become host of the most revered radio shows, one of the most revered radio shows in the region, he would have etched his way into the area's history books. The back porch is now an institution for music lovers near and far. If all he'd done is be the man behind the music all these years of our region's premier summer music festival, he'd have etched his way into the area's history books. The Green River Festival, draws music fans from all over New England and beyond to Greenfield each July and is our own somewhat smaller version of New Orleans Jazz Fest. Over the years, the list of artists who grace the festival is a who's who of, of present and future stars, from Josh Ritter, Fountains of Wayne, to Emmy Lou Harris, Brandy Carlisle, Bombino, John Hyatt, Wanda Jackson, Kermit Ruffins, Richard Thompson, and Steve Earle. The list goes on and on. And the Green River Festival is now an institution for music lovers throughout New England and beyond. If all he'd done is be the man behind the music of one of the great independent record labels in our country, he'd have etched his way into the country's history books. For more than 20 years, Signature Sounds Recordings has been home to some of the best contemporary blues, country, bluegrass, and genre-defying music being made in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. From Chris Smither, Elon Jewell and Lake Street Dive to Winter Pills and Am the Kids, the artists who grace the Signature Sounds catalog, along with the label itself, have spread the musical reputation of our area far and wide. And Signature Sounds is synonymous with wonderful music and musical integrity. And if all this weren't enough, during the last couple of years, the man behind the back porch, the Green River Festival, and Signature Sounds has become the man behind one of the coolest venues we've ever known here in the Valley. The parlor room is as intimate and as artist and audience friendly a room as you're likely to find anywhere. And listening to music here from the likes of Sarah Lee Guthrie and Johnny Irion, or Dan Byrne, or Mark Mulcahy, or Charles Neville, or Marco Benevento is truly like living, listening to a concert in your own living room with 70 or 80 of your closest friends. Jim Olson has truly become a friend of our region's music scene, and he's built his magnificent reputation song by song album by album, and concert by concert. I want to conclude by reading a few short testimonials to Jim and the dynamic and lasting work he's done through the years to make our musical world a better place. The first one is from acclaimed singer, guitarist, and signature sounds recording artist, Richard Schindel, who along with Lucy Kaplansky has a brand new album coming out soon under the name of The Pine Hill Project, and it's one of the best albums I've heard in years. Says Richard, everybody, that is, everybody who is who's lucky has a friend like this, the one who can't wait to play you that latest musical discovery. You both listen, no ulterior motives, no agenda, no posturing, just listen to this. Isn't it great? Jim Olson is that guy, and he's that guy with a record company. We're all very lucky. Here's a quote from Signature Sounds recording artist Mark Arelli, who with his band Barnstar packed this very academy uh, at their record release party here a couple weeks back. Mark says, Jim Olson made my musical dreams come true when he offered me a record deal with Signature Sounds after a gig at Fire and Water in 1998. He supported my every musical whim, be it folk rock, tributes to New England songwriters, Western swing, lullabies, and Bush era, and Bush era protest songs for seven records and 11 years. Jim's a loyal, honest, decent man in an industry that is anything but. I'm proud to call him a friend and to be working with him again. That was from Marcarelli. One of our area's foremost tastemakers and a friend to so many in Western Massachusetts, uh, Monty Belmonte of radio stations WRSI and WHMP, calls Jim Olson, quote, the spirit guide of WRSI, the musical conscience of the river, pretty much always has been. Monty continues, to outside observers, it might seem a little incestuous, the relationship between our radio station and Signature Sounds, but the sounds that Jim brings to Signature Sounds are the sounds he used to bring to WRSI when he was program director, and are the sounds he still brings to the river 
every Sunday morning on the back porch. His influence on our airways continues to be a mighty one, says Monty, and his influence on the Valley music scene with signature sounds, with the many years of the Green River Fest, and now with the parlor room, make Jim the Valley's version of Alan Freed, only without the payola scandal. That's where I come in, Monty continues. With Jim Olson as spirit guide, Dar Williams couldn't have foreseen a truer vision for me when I'm looking for direction for WRSI. Are you out there? Can you hear this? Jimmy Olson, Johnny Memphis. I was out there listening all the time. Thank you, Monty, for that perfect Dar Williams reference from one of the coolest songs ever written about the power of radio while applauding our own radio heroes. Finally, blues legend and signature sounds recording artist Chris Smither says, all of, our, all of my relationships with record companies prior to Signature Sounds have ended in disagreement, and usually was with someone telling me that my, my search for fair, equitable, just treatment was unrealistic, that this was the record biz, and that I would never find anyone different. But I did, and he's a friend. Thanks, Jim. That was from, that was from Chris Smither. So many people here in the Valley are grateful for the musical love that Jim has given us in his own wise and quiet way. In the competitive and, and unpredictable music business, Jim has carved out impressive territory. I think I speak for many of us here today when I say, thank you, Jim, for opening our hearts and our ears to so much great music over the years. Now I'll stop talking and introduce Northampton Arts Council President Eric Olson, who has something for Jim. Thank you. All right, so now I heard Jim is here somewhere. Is he? Can we get you to come up on stage? All right. And uh, by the way, thank you everyone for coming out, you know, uh, helping to support the arts in Northampton by coming to this show, which gives the Northampton Arts Council money to give away in grants to artists in Northampton. So give yourself a big hand. That wasn't a big enough hand. Come on, give yourself a big hand. Thank you for coming out. And all right, here he is, Jim Olson. <laughs> Oh, it's upside down. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You don't have to if you don't want to. I grew up on Long Island, sort of the polar opposite of this in terms of arts, and I moved here in 1984, and for the last three decades have just been knocked out by the amazing community, the amazing support for the arts in this community. Uh, as I travel around the country, going to music conferences and stuff, I tell people Northampton is simply the best, biggest music and art scene in America, the best, biggest small town music scene in America. And, and I know it's true because uh, you look at the art of the Arts Council and of the Northampton Center for the Arts, all our wonderful venues, all our amazing musicians here, this really couldn't happen anywhere else. We are so happy to... Uh, support it. It's always such a pleasure to work with wonderful people and great musicians. Thank you for your support in coming out and uh, supporting the arts and the Northampton Arts Council and the really big show. Great afternoon. <laughs>